Who has believed what we have heard, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, nothing in his appearance that, that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering acquainted with infirmity, as and as one from whom others hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him of no account. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases, yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God, and afflicted. But he, wa he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniqu iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is shed to the slaughter, and like a sheep before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By a per perversion of justice he was taken away who could have imagined his future for he was cut off from the land of the living stricken for the transgression of my people they made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain Dearly beloved, we are here to bury Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus of Nazareth was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all people. But our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. We had hoped that he would be the one to redeem Israel. Now Jesus is dead and gone, yet we who loved him cannot help but feel he could have done so much more. Because he did so much in his brief time, he was granted. As you might expect, anyone who turned the world upside down, serving the least and the lost instead of flattering the rich and the great, attracted first the enmity then the hatred of the powerful, until they conspired to kill him. Who is to blame? Everyone and nobody. Well, we come from dust, and to dust we return. So now, before he is buried and forgotten, I thought it might be meet for those who knew him to share their memories. Would those people please come forward? I was tormented by personal demons, unable to shake a debilitating illness that left me unclean in the eyes of my village. I spent everything searching for a cure and got nothing for it. I am a foreigner living here in Judea. When my daughter got sick, even though I was an outsider, I sought out Jesus. My name is Matthew. My name is Legion. In the course of serving in the Syria Legion, quelling rebellion and quashing dissent, I saw too much and did too much until the weight of the trauma left me unable to function. I lived in the graveyard outside of town, screaming and moaning and wailing until they chained me, and then I broke the chains. People feared me, and I feared myself. I collected taxes for the Romans. The Roman emperor lives far away, but his <coughs> imperial soldiers live near at hand. I was identified with both and hated for it. My daughter was sick. My daughter was dying. She was raving, descending in a dying state. <coughs> and there seemed to be no cure for her disease. 
Then I heard that this Jesus had come to Capernaum, our village, where we live together, Gentiles and Jews. I sought out this Jesus. Everyone was glad to take my money when I had money. But once I was broke, no one would see me. No one would heal me. No one would give me hope. And because of my condition, I was considered unclean. But I was unclean. Though I was just doing my job, collecting taxes, I was considered unclean. Unclean and unapproachable. Just doing my job, another day, another drachma, enduring the grumbling and the hatred of others, when Jesus... And Jesus told me so, so, that he was sent to serve the children of Israel, and children came first before dogs. And I said that even the dogs got to eat the crumbs the tr children dropped from the table. And Jesus... And Jesus was walking away from me, intent on helping someone else, but I reached out a hand and touched the hem of his garment. And Jesus... When Jesus saw me as a real person and not just a raving lunatic and reached into my soul and tore away the demons that tormented me ceaselessly, I was whole. I became somebody again. When Jesus saw me as a real person and not just a hated tax collector <coughs> and invited me to follow him and I left everything and followed him, I was whole. I became somebody again. When Jesus saw me as a real person and not a foreigner and healed my daughter, I was whole. I became somebody again. When Jesus saw me as a real person and said it was my faith that drew power from him, healing me and restoring me to family, friends, and village, I was whole. I became somebody again. Jesus saved me. Jesus restored me. 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 Jesus saves. Thank you so much for sharing. But as much as I appreciate all you have to say, I still can't help but reflect. How ironic. Jesus could save so many people, but as it was said by others, with less reverent intent, at the time of his dying, he could not save himself. How many of us watched him dying and wondered if he was truly the Messiah? Why could he not save himself? And yet, despite our hopes, death came. And here we are, preparing to lay Jesus to rest. And we lay to rest with Jesus as well, his beatitudes, his words of comfort, his challenge to authority, his claim to be the Son of God. Yet we must be realistic, mustn't we? you are. How foolish you all are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Please, please, we are conducting a solemn service here. This is neither the time or place for such rants. Pardon me. While I recognize the intensity and the sincerity, of your emotions, I should point out this is a private service here, and that you may well be in the wrong place. And perhaps you are needlessly expending your emotions, and you would be better employed respecting the legitimate sorrow of all present. Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee? that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified, and on the third day, rise again. He is not here. Don't be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. 
He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. See for yourself. I beg you. For the all you who are faithful, all you who believe, all you whose lives have been saved, open the tomb. Please, I beg open the coffin. Please, I beg open the grave. Please, I beg you for the sake of the mourners. Please, this is to be a solemn service. Please restrain yourself. Oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Please, some dignity here. This is a solemn service. I beg you. Open the, the grave. The mourners, please do not open this. Please do not. No. He is not there. 